It's Feedback Gaming, back for another super video. The last video did really well, so I thought I'd do another one. This time we'll do a bit of a trickier one. We're going to do Poland. In this case, Super Poland. So what is a super video? A super video is where I use the game's mechanics to try and get an early head start on a single player. Which you could do it in a multiplayer game, but it's more beneficial and likely to succeed if it's a single player experience. And in this case, we are going to be playing as Poland. I played this a few times, and I think I've mastered the art to this. And I think this does make you a very strong Poland. I don't I didn't say major power, I said Poland. Because still, you are in an awkward spot in the world, wedged between the Soviet Union and Germany, like two ferocious powers. So you still have a few issues to deal with, but it's gonna be easier to defend against Germany. Easier than just getting yourself wiped completely, put it that way. Anyway, so we're going to go for construction, we are going to go for machine tools, and we're going to go for electronic engineering, so we can get radio, which is a nice meme. We're going to exercise that one division to begin with, just to get a little bit of XP. We need a little bit, so we can make adjustments to the divisions. Having a little bit of combat XP is really good, just to make your game a little bit more flexible. So, I'm thinking into the future here, and looking into my big crystal ball. We can make a prediction here of what land we should build up. Because Germany is going to answer for Danzig a war. And it takes Danzig, uh, Potsdam, and Lodz. I'm pronouncing those really wrong. But those three will go to Germany if you accept it. So you have a choice to say yes or no to that if you want to. So if that's a possibility for the future, which might be a role-playing angle, or just something you want to do to side yourself with the Germans, feel free to do that. And there's an option for you anyway. By the way, guys, if you do enjoy super videos, I will make more if these videos do perform well. And if you want to hit a like on this video, that's a way of telling me that that's the, what you want more of this kind of content. Yeah, um, good. So we are going to produce lots of old guns. Why? Because we can kick out an absolute ton of them. And we are going to change out to close air support. What's one of the cool things about Poland? Technologically, you're not really that advanced, really. Okay, you got AA, I suppose that's kind of cool, and you've got both support equipments, engineers, and reconnaissance. But you get close air support early on, which is sweet, so let's take advantage of that, right? Right. Scroll it down to the bottom, so we're making those. The only thing we don't have is rubber, which isn't a big deal anyway. We don't need to do that, and then we continue to play the game. So the first thing we need to do is go fascist, because fascist allows us to declare war uh, when we have no world tension. We can do it from zero to a hundred. Where if you're not aligned, you can only fabricate over 50% world tension. But over 50% world tension, the problem is is that the, the UK is going to guarantee, because the guarantee limit for world tension is 25%. So, we're going to try and go fascist as early on as quickly as possible. The best way to do that is strengthen the, the Polish state, which gives 120 political power. Which is really good bang for your buck, because you would usually only gain, well I guess you could gain 140 political power I guess. If you didn't pick a national focus and just sat on it and waited, I guess. But we need to work towards Polish militarism and Polish revanchalism. I'm pronouncing that right? I think so. We need that, which will explain more why in future. Why? We do need a little bit of political power for a few little things we are going to do early on. We are going to use a little cheat trick to finish the civil war and win it really quickly. And this is the fastest way. So you either got referendum or civil war. And we can do a cheeky way with a civil war to make it fire. And get the civil war to go off really quick. So we're going to go for the fascist demagogue. And we are going to go prepare for a civil war. Polish militarism is what we need to progress down the focus tree. Plus you do get a handy 2.5% extra recruitable pop. Which is the equivalent... No, it's actually the equivalent of extensive, isn't it? No, actually, it's a little bit less than that. Actually, it's the equivalent of nothing, but it's 1.5%. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's 2.5%. percent i take it, take it back. Anyway, um, back on track. We need political power to be able to go for the Civil War, which we are going to go immediately with. And also, we're going to go for the anti-fascist Raids. So to fire a civil war, you need to be below 50% stability, okay? Uh, so you need to do something to reduce the stability. All of these reduce stability, increase the uh, proportion of fascism. Uh, what we are going to do, though, instead is go for the anti-fascist 
the, the anti-democratic raids, which drops your stability by 10%, but overall gains an additional 2 So you'll end up at, I think, 61%. But the initial drop puts you below 50%, so you can fire the civil war. We need 100 political power to do that, so we're just going to sit on that and wait. So we'll highlight that one. Democratic, that's the one. And then the civil war is ignite. The civil war is that one. So we'll highlight that one as well. Good. So now we need to wait for 100 political power. Um, I think we're going to move you here. We have a Spanish civil war that we are not going to participate in. So we did leave one factory on support equipment and one on close air support. The idea is we have a very slow trickle of equipment going into our economy, which we will take advantage of later in the game. It's one of my little fancy things that I love to do. I love to take advantage of that 100%. Well, I think it's 50% at the start of the game. Yeah, 50% production efficiency. And that has less than, but you get to switch out the plane and you don't lose as much production efficiency. And plus, close air support are essential to make breakthroughs. Otherwise, you can't make pushes, so it's going to be not worthwhile. You're either going to go for artillery to make push, uh, to make advancements, or tanks, or close air support. It's one of those three. They're the most effective ways of doing it. I guess you could do fancy things with paratroopers as well. Or you could try your absolute best to smash lots of infantry at the front line. I guess you could do that if you really wanted to. I wouldn't recommend that, though. I would not recommend that. I have remembered that we have started training these divisions a little bit late. But that's okay. We can uh, we can wait and build up a little bit more political power. We aren't in a massive hurry. But as long as we're in a position to deploy these divisions when the war starts up. Off, we will be in a good state. So we need 20% training before we can deploy them early. The idea is, is we're going to deploy them around the country when we need, where we need them and take out land where we need it. There, we're done. So there we go. So we're going to go for now. Anti-democratic raids. So we're at 48% stability now. And ignite the civil war. And here we go, the civil war. And interestingly enough, the non-aligned Poland is blue. It feels like every time I've done this, they've been a little bit slightly different color. Yeah, I think they were like a, uh, a kind of a reddish, very lightish red last time. Where's my training? Here we go, yeah. So this is a really cheeky trick. Avert your eyes, this may upset you. Oh my god, what is Dave doing? This is so cheeky. This is so cheeky. How dare you use these dirty tactics. Alright, go here. Go here. Go here, go here, go here. And go here, go here, go here. And then you guys go. I realized too that for some reason, once you deploy them and then you hit space, they lose all their orders again, so you have to deploy them again. Don't ask me why that happens. It must be something to do with the Civil War mechanic. Don't ask me why. I don't know. It's just a thing. There you go. Did it. Once again, just to make doubly sure. The reason why I'm telling them to go for more land is because most of the time, if you take the two victory points... Well, this, this doesn't always happen every time, but sometimes you take the victory points and the war doesn't end. So you might have to grab a little bit more extra land before the war ends. I am just going to select all these divisions and assign them to this army. Don't exercise and give him a decent general. Because that means if we do engage some enemy forces, which there's a chance we might do, uh, we'll be able to have a bit of power to push them back. Otherwise, we are going to be in a bit of a state. Rush construction. We've grabbed Krakow. And we'll know it's about to fall. Will we see any enemy divisions? More than likely, it doesn't look like it. No. And that's the end of the Civil War, guys. Wow, 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 wow. <clears throat> so as you can see now, we're in July 1936 and we're switched to fascist. That's probably a world record on how quick you can switch to fascist as Zipuland. Anyway, here we go. So now we need to wait for this to finish. So Polish revengeism. Revangelism, revangelism, that's it, uh, reduces uh, the justified time by minus 25%. So we're going to wait for that to finish, then we'll start justifying on Lithuania. The Civil War has ended. There's a weird bug where when the Civil War has ended, you get the Rebuild the Nation national focus, but you get it for all three ideologies. And yes, guys, you can fire all three of them at the same time. Why would you do that? I don't know. But you can save them for later. I think this doesn't actually stay here forever, though. I think it only lasts for like a year, maybe. I'm not sure. But regardless, you can fire it. You lose political power. But you gain extra civs, infrastructure per, and factory output 10%, which is very sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. And we need extra political power for this. No, we do it 36, because we need less political power for it. So we're going to go for that. 180 days. Boom, ba-doom, boom, boom. All right, let's deploy these guys. 
Actually, what we'll do is we'll do another little cheeky trick by deploying them as cavalry. One, they'll train quicker. And two, we can train more divisions simultaneously. And you're probably thinking, what, Dave? No, we want them to be decent infantry, not freaking horses. What? Which actually, we might actually go for horses. But they are going to use more equipment. It depends on how we are in the game anyway. We'll, we'll see how, thing, how things pan out. So if you guys are familiar with, horses have extra speed. Something like an extra 50% more speed. Um, the downside is they use more equipment, infantry equipment. And they also have bigger terrain penalties for certain terrains. So you've got infantry... There you go, but then cavalry, you see there's a few attack penalties for certain terrain types. Horses aren't as good for attacking. But you've got speed, which usually is a good trade-off overall. Radio is done. Uh, we've gone for these. We're going to go for the Doctrine. Now, you have a choice here. Grand Battle Plan and Mass Assault are very good. Both of them are really good. Um, they're both defensive Doctrines. But at the end of Grand Battle Plan, you do get more offensive options. So, I don't know about this. I've played this at both ends. And I prefer Grand Battle Plan just for the flexibility of the extra planning bonus. And I also found Infiltration quite useful as, as Poland as well. What you want to do, if you choose to do that, it's up to you. But I found that most effective. There you go. We've got horses. And then we deploy them as infantry. And then we exercise them. And then we also take off the reconnaissance, and then we make the division bigger as well. And there you go, that's what all the extra XP at the start of the game we were getting. We have actually got excess XP, but we can use that later on anyway. Anyway, we're going to exercise these guys. We've all we've got all the right equipment to do this, and therefore we declare war on Lithuania. It will make sense. So Lithuania is a good choice to begin with. One, it's, it's a good target. It's weak. It's got a nice amount of factories. It's got a nice piece of steel. But, most of all, the biggest thing, the best thing, is you get to form the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which gives you a bunch of cores. Well, not just a few cores, a lot of cores. Um, funnily enough, it's only one of the formal nations that when you form it, you have options to expand to get more cores, where the other formal nations are the other way around. they like, you have to get in all the land. I don't know, I like the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth because it's, it's, it's fun. You know, like I like the idea of gaining a little bit of land and then you expand to get back your old cores. I think that's more fun anyway. I don't know why all the other formal nations aren't like that. All right, war economy. Now we are seriously pumping out some factories. Um, civvies, we're 18. Okay, another two will be fine. And then we'll go for some m -m 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 military factories. All right, we are going to go for defensive focus. Um, it gives the extra 20% construction of forts and 20% production of military factories. You won't probably use forts, but you can. And it's just nice to have the extra 20%, put it that way. Let's have a look at the advice. You get Prince of Terror, which is, yeah, okay, not that good for Poland. Um, that guy is good, the war industrialist, which we will take advantage of. Yeah, I'm actually happy with this production of civvies. We get like 20 civvies, that will be enough. And then we'll get some more as we expand as well, which will be sweet. The justification is almost complete. We'll be finished on the 26th of January. And exercise these guys a little bit. We need to promote a general. So one of the downsides of doing the Civil War is you lose half of your generals. Not a lot you can do about that, really. So it is what it is. Defensive focus is paramount, and organization first is also really good. Particularly more useful if you're going for grand battle plan because you need the extra reinforce rate. So we have a decent sized air force. We're going to sign them to here, go here and here. Sign that to 100 air wing. Put that to 100 if we do produce any more from capturing enemy ones, we can use those. And there you go, dun 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 dun. I don't think we'll be able to train these to level 2s, but we'll definitely try. Every little modifier for extra attack is going to go a long way. So there's a choice here. I'd recommend siding with the Soviets. It's just smart. So here you've got the option to gain more fascism and to get better relations with Germany and also gain recruitable pop. Now, my understanding when historicals turn on, which it is, you, there's no level of relations you can get with Germany to stop them from going Danziger War. They'll still go Danziger War. The only time they won't go Danziger War, which I'm, I'm not certain about this, I haven't tested it, but, well, I did test it when the game came out, but it's been, there's been a lot of DLC since then, is that when you were in an alliance, you're in the Axis with Germany, and they, go, they don't pick Danziger War. 
And then, and then maybe if you, they do pick Danzig or War... I don't know, there's something I have to test that. I'm not actually too sure. Um, but there you go, there's an option. Maybe you can play with Germany a little bit by joining their faction at some point to try and uh, throw them off on Danzig or War. I don't know, maybe we'll try that at the end of this game. It'll be a test. So anyway, yeah, the only bonus you get is the 2% recruitable, which is really good. The problem is it's taking you like a year, maybe two years to get down the bottom there. So all these are pretty much useless. So in that case, you want to go for your Doctrine. You get three boosts. One, two, three. So in that case, you can work your way down Grand Battle Plan down to about here, Grand Assault, which all of these give you nice early bonuses for defense. Extra planning, extra entrenchment, breakthrough, soft attack, all of them are spicy. That's cool, they're getting extra factories, that's more factories for me to steal, which is always good to see. One thing you don't have much problem with is Poland. One of the advantages of Poland is you have a really good pop. Your population's really good. And when you fall it, fin it, f form the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, um, you, uh, well, you get more population, so that becomes even less of an issue. Wait for that organization to get back up again, and we're good to go. All right, we're going to declare war. We are going to attack, and we are going to do a maneuver, which is like this. So you're probably thinking to yourself, why are you doing this, Dave? Just attack them and grab the victory points and end the war. Well, if we get us around on them, we get uh, XP bonuses for our generals, which is going to work out better in the long run, so I'm all for more XP. Put it that way. I'm all for that. Actually, don't attack that guy because he's going to retreat. I want to pop. I want to pop these guys in place. Go here and here. Go here and here. Are we in a good spot here? Yeah, we are. Don't leave. Don't leave. Oh yeah, that's it. Perfect. Right click is strong. That's good. Everyone go here. Perfect, and as you can probably see, this guy's leveled up. He's level four now. Nice. Um, now at this point, I guess you could cheese a little bit because the get the war's technically not over, but you can kind of just wait around. I guess at this point, what you could do is snipe any extra divisions that do appear. Uh, but what will happen is when this war ends. So I guess yeah, actually, I'm just gonna, I'm feel like I'm looping back on myself here. This just feels like every time I do this, I do it a little bit differently because I found a like more, slightly more optimal way of doing it. So in this case, don't annex them because it's going to... When you annex this nation... When you annex this nation, it is going to spike world tension a small amount. So what we are going to do now... Is fabricate on Romania. 6% world tension. If you go for Czechoslovakia, it's 7%. So go for Romania instead. So that means that will put us in a war against Romania and Czechoslovakia. We're still below 25% world tension, but be aware there are things that are going to happen around the world that's going to spike world tension. The end of the Spanish Civil War, Anschluss, and also the Marco Polo incident. So there are all elements that could spike world tension. If they happen while you're fabricating and it pushes, pushes you over 25%, they will guarantee, and that obviously doesn't put you in a good state. It causes problems. Germany would like to send divisions to us, would they? Would they now? So the only downside of being at war is you have less stability, so you're producing less equipment. I guess that's another downside. Missing out on a total of two civvies. I can worthwhile. That's going to be all right. There's a chance that they're so close to capitulating right now that if we pushed a little bit too far, uh, they could capitulate anyway. One thing I did in my previous game is I surrounded this one city in the north here. And even without taking it, they capitulated because they will, their uh, national focus was so low. And exercise them, why not? So as time goes on, world tension just slowly and truly trickle away. It does World tension doesn't always stay high. It's slowly reduced. See, it was at 15%, now it's 14%. So there are opportunities, like windows of opportunity, where you can try and uh, work around the game mechanics. Try and justify as many nations as possible. Alright, I'm going to put you guys here. Ideally, we want three armies for this. Ideally. So we'll do our third army now. Alright. 
So, in my previous game, I didn't do this thing where I'm doing right now with uh, Lithuania. I just annexed them straight off. Um, but there is still a chance if you get a really unlucky game where, I don't know, the Spanish Civil War ends and or Marco Polo fires all at the same time, uh, you can end up in a situation where world tension gets spiked over 25%. And that is going to be shit because that means that the UK is going to guarantee Romania. And that is going to be a whole bunch of trouble. There you go. East Prosperity Sphere, and then they go Marco Polo straight after that, which spikes world tension by one. But then they declare war, and it spikes it by some more as well. If we fabricate on China right now, it will do an 8%. So just be aware, so it'll be 1%, then extra 8 and then the end of the Spanish, Spanish Civil War, that could spike it some more. And then Lithuania could spice it some more as well. So there's, there's a lot of things that could spike it further. 38%, that's good. And some Poland, more Doctrine boosts. Yep, everything's going pretty swell right now. I'm actually happy with everything's put together. War industrialist. Not doing too good on guns, but as I do, we can produce more guns. That's the reason why we're for the weaker guns, because we can pump out more of them at this point. So at the start of the game, with maximum uh, uh, production efficiency, it's about 50 guns per day. Now we're producing 64. So that gives you an idea. Like, if you go for the weaker guns, you can produce overall more divisions and obviously have more firepower when the war does finally kick off, which is always going to be good. All right, we're gonna work on the infantry equipment. You can if you want to at some point, maybe when you've formed your super nation. Oh, what's this? Another division? Oh, I like this. Can we can we get around this guy? Can we let go? Is it gonna is it gonna capitulate? Oh no! Bonus XP, boys. Bonus XP. Anyway, he's dead. This is the end. Right, so this is going to be our attack army. Uh, this guy, this army has got the most XP, got the best general, and overall has the best offensive capabilities. I realize we've not switched out this army as well. That probably is a good idea now, think about it, because then we could focus on... Ah, oh, that's actually a really good point. Hmm, never thought of that. I, I think like I'm a little bit ahead of schedule here, because before when I did this, I didn't find myself... I didn't find myself fabricating on Romania as early. So, hmm. I guess in this case, I guess I could do that. I could balance it all out. So, I thought that I'm going to do that, actually. Let's produce all guns for these divisions. There's no point exercising those. So, we'll put our two crappier armies, the ones we just recruit on the Romania and Czechoslovakian border, and then these divisions here. Uh, we'll put here... And then put here. Oh my god, look at that two-prong thing. Oh my god, that looks so professional. And I didn't even mean to do it. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Looking at all my generals. Yeah, they're all good. I need to upgrade the one. Lit purges in the Soviet Union. Japan has declared war. Okay, so here we go. Some spikes of world tension. And as you can see... That's pushed it to 23%. So you think about it, I saved this for at least 1.5%. So that would put it to 24.5. And then if the Spanish Civil War ended, that would push it over 25%, which would mean that Romania would get fabricated on. So you're constantly working on like this very, very short schedule to try and prevent world tension from spiking. And it has just gone up again, once again. Oof. That's really scary, that actually. That pushes it really close. I think what's happened is some volunteers have been sent... And volunteers spike world tension as well. So there's a lot of little micro events in the game that could potentially, well, ruin the strategy, ruin the build. All right, at the moment, there's nothing I need to research. So I can go for like excess, well, in this case, excess electronics or excess production ahead of time, for instance. National focus wise, uh, you want to go for research slots next, more than likely. So look, look, is there anything I can go for? Uh, yeah, you need a research slot because right now you're kind of limited by your production. So this one is the one you want to go for. Deploy these divisions. Bombs the United Front. Hey, hey. There you go. Boom. You guys go here. We don't have any spare generals, so we're going to have to make one. One without a portrait. That's upset me. There we go. The 
This guy is a brilliant strategist. Guys, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Actually, that's one of the really good background traits, that as well. Yeah, that's one of the spicy ones, too. That is one of the uh, slightly more spicy traits. So right now, we're currently 3% uh, behind. That's okay. I'm all right with that. We don't need to import steel for that reason. We might get to the point, though, that we might need to import a little bit. Um, just to prevent losing production. 24%. We're generating 10%. Alright, everything's looking so good. So far, so good. Japan is currently at war. Our justification is complete. We can wait a little bit longer, though. This justification doesn't expire until the 20th of October. Yep, so they are guaranteed by Czechoslovakia, which will bring the Czechoslovakians into the war. This is kind of like a proxy thing, because we don't actually really want to take out the Romanians first. We're going to check out the Czechoslovakians. Man, this is almost like Germany declaring war on Belgium, you know? We don't really want to get through Belgium, but Belgium's just in the way. We want to get to France, right? Actually, that would be both world wars, wouldn't it? Thinking face. Alright, I've I got to admit, this is a little bit ahead of schedule than my previous games. So, we might as well just wait the full time limit, right? We are, like, a little bit behind on guns. So, our air force needs to be deployed here to make that big push into Czechoslovakia. And then activate that command as well. This is my best general. Make him red, really pop out. Oh, man, that looks so good. Infantry leader is his main trait, and he's over just under halfway there. Eh. Will he get it in time before the war's over? That's debatable. Plus, this guy is versatile. He's also got a background as an armor officer. So that means um, he can be phased into a, a panzer leader if that's the direction we want to go. You've got the flexibility to do that. But we desperately need guns right now. How many years? Um, 20th of October. So we're better off waiting, to be honest with you. Yeah, we're better off waiting. We're not going to have all the guns ready, but we'll have most of them. So that'll be enough to hold the front line. They might end up pushing us back in a few places, but that's totally okay. Alright, we are good to go now. It's interesting that this guy is good to go, but this guy is like, nope. Nope. Alright, let's do this. Declare war. And the war is on, gentlemen. Yep. They are pushing us here, and it looks like they are managing to push us back, which is a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. And it looks like we're going to push them here successfully too. We could probably make a fallback line here at some point and let them take a little bit of land. The hardest to break is Romania, because they can concentrate their forces here, and overall they'll have more artillery, and they'll more, have more of an air force too, so they'll be able to do a lot more damage. Let the uh, Germans have their divisions. I'm totally okay with that. Can send some divisions to me to help me out in the war. That's always going to be cool. Rush construction. Yeah, sure. Alright, I'm going to go for that. Once that we managed to break them there, that's perfect. And then we pushed forward here. I'm going to right click here to hold them and pin them in place. We just want to split Czechoslovakia in two into Slovakia and Czechia. <laughs> yeah, Czechia. Slovakia and Czechia. How's it going down here, boys? Oh, we're just, well, we're just holding. Are we doing all right? I'm okay with that. I'm all right. All right, you guys here just to pin him in. I want to pin this guy in the mountain. So you be aware that the Sudan is still an issue, by the way, because they've got lots of forts. So you're actually hitting the soft spot here, which is really good for you. Yeah, the soft spot is the soft underbelly of Czechoslovakia. How are we losing this? Alright, you go here. You go here. When we split them, they'll have start, start having supply problems. Which is going to be perfect. 
I, we might have got insanely lucky here. The AI might have been really dumb and actually left check here empty. Yeah, there's actually a chance that actually might be the case, guys. Germany sent four divisions, which is always nice. I'm going to say no to that. Go for some infantry boosts. Yep, there's no divisions. I guess in this case, if we push Bratislava, it's going to be pretty much over. Oh my god, this is insanely lucky. This is insanely lucky. So, when you see these super videos, obviously I've rehearsed them because you've got to perfect the strategy. And uh, I, I've run about three rehearsals on this to try and make sure there's nothing that could potentially be an issue. Um, and this is the luckiest I've been so far. It might have been because I did it early, maybe. Possibly. I'm not sure. I mean, that division's been surrounded. See, these guys are not doing very well. It's because they're so weak. It, I, yet again, I am ahead of schedule with this, so that might explain why... Guess it, in my experience, if you're watching this and you want to recreate it in your own way, um, what I'd recommend is just wait a little bit longer. You've got a lot of time. You're 9.36, 7, sir. Whoa, no! I didn't tell you to do that. All right, now I'll go here. There we go. All right, you go here. You go here. Go here. Go here. Remember, the more land you take... All on you take, the um, quicker they capitulate. So we need Bratislava here. I love, I love how the AI is deciding to move here. <laughs> so weird. Humiliation, guys. To the highest. Oh, are we gonna walk into Bratislava? Are we gonna walk in? <laughs> That is insanely lucky. That is insanely lucky. All right, boys. So I think what we'll do is we'll layer up you guys. One layer here. And the other guy is going to be here. And this is our main attack army. Which more than likely, we better push into this eastern flank. Because there's a lot of planes here. And if we push out here, we're going to be in a really good position. Actually, let's get the center of the um, air zone. That gives the biggest attack bonus. Uh, air efficiency bonus. Can we like, get you guys to go here, please? You guys can railroad to here, too. Uh, ignore the guns. Oh my god, we're doing so well. Alright, so we're in a position right now that we can make a better infantry. So let's do that. Duplicate. Elite. Um... Oof, for attack purposes, what's going to be better? Engineers or reconnaissance? Interesting. I don't know. All right, we'll go with this, guys. Um, and we can do that, too. I think what I'll do is disable the orders and exercise them behind enemy lines for a little bit because I don't want them to lose their regular status because that 25% attack bonus is just, like, insane. So I'm just going to exercise them for a little bit while they reinforce. And then when they attack, they're going to do some crazy damage. It is winter as well. Um, more infrastructure, yes. Alright, we're all good. So this is the reason why you produce all the excess support equipment on the one factory. So you've still got an excess of 270. That means there's, a lot, there's, some, there's more we have in reserve that we can lose, that we can use later on. Which is always going to be good. All right, you guys are positioned. We're going to go for a staff office plan. Get a max planning bonus, which we're going to take advantage of because we are a grand battle plan. And then we are going to push. Oh, look at that. Can we break it? Ooh, we're struggling a little bit. Doesn't look like we're going to have to break it at this exact point, so we're going to have to find a softer spot. No, we're actually losing ground here. Looks like one of our divisions, too, has lost some uh, XP due to pushing when we can't succeed. So we could push. Ooh, they instantly push into us as well. The deal is that they've got nice entrenchment and they more than likely have artillery as well. I'm trying to think of a spot that might be better because it connects to two here. Now, there isn't a weaker spot, I don't think. This is a potential one. Maybe we can push if we just kind of like keep beating our head against the wall here. 
Oh, we've got green air. Maybe this is going to be it. Uh, sorry, yellow air. Extra factories. Ooh, I think I'll take that. Uh, so at this point, I guess we could train extra divisions as well. Go for an extra 24 of you. Put them here. Because you always want to extend your armed forces even when you're in a situation where you don't need any extra troops. Right now, can we break this? The problem is, is we're trying to breach over a bridge. Tactic has been countered. We push into this guy to try and hold him in place. Push here. You sometimes get really lucky, and if you hold the whole front line, if you hold it in place, you can make, um, you can almost surround their front line. Which is a very cheeky strat, but it works quite well, so why the hell not? Eh? And go. Ooh, 97. So if you, you, don't, you didn't see what I just did then, just for a second. I, uh, I chose to... I chose to hold hold the line, let all the other divisions attack from other armies, and then use staff office plan to build planning bonus up again. Still, even that one breakthrough there is still probably not enough. We're going to go for infiltration. It has less planning bonus overall, but you get some nice bonuses like 25% night attack, which is pretty spicy. Can we break through here? 96, 10 days. Break the Soviet division now, that's nice. Can we do that? And then go here. Oh, low supply, make it even worse. I believe, guys, it can be done. We choose to... The AI choose to attack into this tile. Why? I have not the foggiest. Maybe it sees that as a softer spot, maybe. Actually, that's a good point. Maybe this is the right way to attack. Because this is an area that we can have a wider combat with and we're not attacking over a river. We are attacking over a river. Really surprised how, uh, how the air control is going right now, too. Got an extra close air support and a few bombers as well. Uh, might as well use the bombers. We're attacking over a river here into mud. Okay, I've got to admit, at this point, this is where I was a lot luckier in my test run. A lot luckier. Uh, I managed to find a break in this northern tip here. And then I managed to, like, encircle there in a whole front line. So this is not going as well as in my little play run, play test run. Um, I think training these divisions has actually hurt me right now because we've got... Yeah, it is hurting us. Ah, oh, man, we burned so much support equipment. I can't believe how much we burned. Can we manage to push into this guy? It looks like this might be doable. Six days, five days, six days, four days, three days. To tell this guy to hold him in. I don't want him to reinforce. All right, I think we've got a breakthrough here. So I'm going to make a push with everyone. I want you guys to go here, you guys to go here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And then you guys can attack in the center. Oh, that's perfect. Watch this, watch this. Oh! Oh, yeah. That's it. So this is this is the breakthrough that I was talking about. So yeah, the main armies are holding the front, and now we can plow into their front line and do some crazy damage. Go here and here, go here and here. The front line is going to completely dissolve now. And then we get some nice cheeky encirclements on the way as well, which is always nice. And then we can micro each individual division to push across. And at this point, they won't be able to survive this anymore. Go here, go here, go here. 
want you guys to be aggressive. Oh, that's so brutal. That is so brutal. And the divisions are surrounded too, so we get the XP bonus. I want to keep an eye on what Germany's doing too, because they might actually go for the Sudeten. Right now, they might. I think they might be waiting to do the um, demand Sudeten, but they can't do it because of the national. Because we're kind of cocking their national focus. Yeah, that's cool. It's okay. They've got troops in, in Bucharest. I'm all right with that. Oh, and then move troops out of Bucharest. That, that's totally okay as well. <laughs> Go here, go here, go here, that's good. Invest in old Polish town, extra research slot. Um, go here. Oh, they've actually made a counterattack in the north here, that's spooky. I guess here is the soft spot. Oh, is the AI being, oh, I've just spot the AI is about to do something really dumb. Oh no, they're not. Okay, I thought they were gonna like, leave themselves open to get in circle, but there's a chance that actually might still happen. There's no troops here. Oh my god, guys, is this going to be the moment I'm talking about? Is this going to be the AI's dumb moment? It is. What an encirclement, boys. It feels really good when you break through their front line and then encircle their front line. That just feels so good, man. Feels good, man. So at this point, they will have enough divisions to hold their front line. And that is it, guys. This is Super Poland. This has run over a little bit. I, I predicted this would be about a 30-minute video, but it's gone a little bit over. But that's totally okay. And there you go, guys. Super Poland. What is Germany going to do now? Army Innovations 2. So, what's going on here? We have a Poland that has 107 factories. A lot of civvies, 57 civvies, so that's enough civvies to last you pretty much the rest of the game. And you've got a lot of military factories too, so you have some crazy economy. So in this case, you can build a lot of factories. So at this point, do whatever you please. You can join the Axis. You can, if you ask for Danzig War, you can give up these three states if you wanted to as well. Uh, you might run into issues with the Sudeten as well, and if that's the case, then just fortify the line. You'll be able to hold the Sudeten. Look at the forts, level 7 forts. And plus, if you've got enough divisions, you can just push into East Prussia as well. Be aware as well, you've got the Soviets to your east as well, and they're probably going to cause you a lot of stress as well. So be aware that they might fabricate your new as well. But in this situation, you've got so many things you can do. You can go communist, join the Soviets, you can go fascist, join the Germans. You can be this crazy strong buffer state. Get this. It gets even... It, get this. You can even get... There's more cores. Where are your cores? Guys, I just completely forgot. I've actually formed the, the Commonwealth. <laughs> I totally forgot. I forgot. How did I forget that? So right now, you've got cores and a bunch of other states as well. So if you're going to have issues with manpower, look at all these cores you've got here on the eastern border as well. Oh my god, you've even got East Prussia as well. How crazy is that? There you go, guys. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to spike that like button as well. The more like if I get, if I say, if I get 2,000 likes on this video, I'll make another super video, all right? My promise to you guys anyway. Hope you have an awesome day, everyone, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.